Welcome to Mark Paintball. I want to start off by thanking you guys for choosing our venue for your next outing. Today through this video we're going to go over a couple quick things, mainly the safety portion and the how-to's in terms of how to actually play for some of those that have never done paintball before. So there's a couple things that we're going to go through in this video. First thing is going to be your mask. So everybody that comes to our facility is going to get a mask similar to this. The mask is fully equipped with a chin strap and a back strap which is actually how you're going to tighten that mask as soon as it's on your head. So there's two tabs here on this mask and as soon as you put that mask on your head you're going to take those two tabs and just pull them apart from each other and that's really what's going to tighten that mask while it's on your head. Once you get your mask strapped on and chin strap done up you're ready to go for the day. When the mask is on your head you're going to want to make sure that you wear the strap up nice and high make sure it's not down low so that way there's no shake factor and we can make sure that your mask stays on nice and comfortably while you're playing out in the fields today. Pretty simple, not much to it. The mask is the most important piece and while we're out in a staging area or inside a netted area safety zone, these masks are the only time that they can come off of your head. Once you enter the gaming zone, and you'll see signs everywhere around our facility saying masks on past this point, your mask cannot be removed. If your mask comes off your head, you'll get a warning or potentially you will be done for the day before your day has even started. Now, let's say you're running out there today or someday that you're out here at our facility and you trip over your own two feet and your mask for some reason accidentally comes off your head. Well, you need to know what to do. It's a one in a billion chance, but the first thing you're gonna do is drop everything in your hands, you're gonna grab the palms of your hands and cover your eyes as fast as you can. Using both hands, you wanna make sure that your eyes are covered. This will actually create a nice tight seal. You wanna make sure that you're not using your fingers to cover your eyes because a paintball can penetrate through your fingers and do damage to your eyes. Once you cover your eyes up, you're gonna to drop to your knees, put your head in between your knees, and then call for a referee. If you take a paintball, to the throat or maybe to the lower area, it's not going to feel the greatest, but it won't do permanent damage. However, if you do take one to the eye, it can cause permanent damage, so we want to make sure that at all times you're being safe while on site. Our second part is our marker itself. So when you come to Mark, this is something that you're going to get from us. This is called the Titman A5. We don't call them guns because they don't shoot bullets, they shoot paintballs. Paintballs go into the top of your hopper and this little piece here, the green part, is called your hopper. The piece on the end, this is called your barrel soft, your barrel bag, or your barrel condom. It is to stay on your marker at all times, especially while you're in a staging area or inside a netted safety zone. Basically, anywhere that somebody has removed their mask, you are not allowed to remove this barrel sock. Again, if you remove your barrel sock in one of those areas, you'll get a warning or potentially, depending on severity, it may well end your day. Your barrel bag is always attached to your marker. It dangles on the end. It doesn't affect your gameplay, so you don't have to worry. You can wrap it around your tank, but that's how simple it is to actually get going and set your marker up. All of the markers that we have are equipped with a safety, and the safety on the marker itself, as you can see, is this little switch. The switch itself has a safety position, a white position, or an S position, and when that trigger is pointing to the ground, it actually doesn't move. When the little switch is pointing up into that F position, red position, or firing mode, your trigger actually moves. So we want to make sure at all times when we're not playing that your safety is on, your barrel sock is always on your marker, and when not in play, your trigger finger is hanging off, it's not over the trigger, and your barrel is pointed at the ground. We want to make sure just in case you do pull the trigger, and this barrel sock comes off, that your marker is always pointed down and not at somebody else while you're not in play. So, how do you play paintball? It's actually pretty simple. So your tank is going to sit into your shoulder, you're going to have two hands on your marker, and that's how I play. If you've got short little T-Rex arms, your tank's just going to go underneath, and that's how you play with two hands. So, how is the game played when you're out there today? It's actually fairly simple. You're going to point the other end at your opponent, you're going to fire away. Let's say I take a hit, whether it's to your hopper, your shoulder, or your mask, one hit and you're out. Games are relatively quick, they last between 7 to 10 minutes, depending on the scenario, and if you have a respawn ability, respawn being you're allowed to re-enter the game after you've been hit, the refs will let you know in each particular field. So, if I'm going back and forth with an opponent, I get hit in the hopper or the shoulder, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to yell, hit, out, 
as loud as you can to ensure that the referees and the other team can hear you. As soon as you do that, you're going to raise your arm, and then you're going to get out from that bunker and walk to wherever the refs have designated that the safety zone is. I caution you that you need to do one of those three, and as you're coming off, keep your hand up, because if you just get up from the bunker and start walking, people won't realize that you're out, and they're going to keep firing at you. We have two house rules here at Mark Paintball. Number one rule is 15 feet or less, you must automatically surrender the other opponent. So, if I run up to somebody 15 feet or less, I'm not allowed to open fire, I'm gonna yell, surrender, as loud as I can, and that other player is out. If that other player decides to turn around, accidentally shoot me, maybe they're new, maybe they don't realize, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my hit, I'm gonna wipe it off, I'm still in the game, that player is still in. House rule number two, let's say I run up to a bunker, I yell, surrender, as loud as I can, nobody can hear me, because maybe they're in a tower, or a fort, or a building, or who knows what, you're just going to tap on that building or wall or whatever it is three times and they're automatically, everybody inside and six feet around it will be out. If a referee points to you during the course of the day while you're out of the field like this, means that you are out. If they point to you like this, means that you are still safe in the game. Now some people might say, well why would somebody point to me like this? It's pretty simple. A paintball must break on you to be considered a hit. Sometimes you can get some spray that comes off of a building or a bunker or a car or something. Or maybe you get hit with a paintball that doesn't break because you're wearing a big bulky vest or a big sweater in the wintertime. If it doesn't break, it doesn't count. However, if you call yourself out, come off the field and then realize you haven't been hit, you cannot re-enter the game. So what you can do is you can call for a paint check. So if you've got a teammate behind you, you can say, hey Mike, I got any paint on my back? Maybe he can't see you, maybe you're the last one on the uh, field. So you say, hey ref, I need a paint check. One of the refs will run over to you and they'll say, hey, where'd you get hit? You say, in the back of the shoulder. He'll take a look and he'll do either this and say, yep, you got hit, you're out. Or he'll say, nope, you're safe, you're clean, keep playing. So you can go ahead and continue inside the game. All of our games at Mark Paintball here start the same way. You're going to hear one of the referees do a countdown. Three, two, one, and blow a big whistle to start that game. At the end of the game, when the match is over, being either the time limit has run out, somebody's captured the flag, escorted the VIP, or something along those lines, you're going to hear a double whistle. Some days, most days really, there'll be multiple groups running around. So always make sure that that double whistle is your double whistle from your referee. Don't always just hesitate to go ahead and stand up right away because your game may not be over and we don't want you to get hit with extra paint. So always be cautious as soon as you hear the double whistle, maybe get up slowly or maybe take a look off to the sidelines. You'll hear your referee say, okay guys, come on over to me. We'll take you to the next field. Um, but just make sure that it is your referee that has blown the whistle. If you hear that double whistle 99.9% per, .9 of the times, it'll be your game ending. But 0.1% of the time, it could be an emergency. And that emergency can be anything, really. It could be maybe somebody's mask has fallen off. Maybe there's a pack of rabid squirrels dragging one of you guys off into the bush because they want to make some minced meat out of you. We don't know. As soon as you hear that double whistle, though, make sure you lower your barrel, you put your sock and your safety back on your marker, and you head over to wherever the referees have told you to go for the day. Now, there's a couple other things. Number one, there's no crack shooting. And what crack shooting is, is basically something that I am able to take my barrel and squeeze through. That's called a crack. That's not a visible window. You will see all our fields have visible windows that you can shoot through in our towers and our forts. So make sure that you can visibly see your opponent through a window and you're not actually sticking your marker through a crack. The other thing that I want to mention as well is, other than crack shooting, we want to make sure that you don't blind fire. Blind firing is basically if I'm standing behind a tree or a bunker, taking my barrel, sticking it around the corner, and firing away. Two things happen when you blind fire. Number one, all you do is waste your own paint. But number two, and most importantly, and something that we see here all the time is, when you stick that barrel around the corner and you can't see who you're firing at, most likely you're gonna hit your own player in the back of the head who's sitting right in front of you. And sometimes they don't appreciate that. So make sure at all times you can always visually see where your opponent is so you can fire back at them. Other than that, there's really not much more to cover. We are here to ensure that number one priority is kept, that your safety and the way that you show up is the way that you leave. Number two priority is to make sure that you guys have a blast while you're at our facility. If at any time you break any of our safety rules, we will ask you to leave unfortunately. And for us, we wanna make sure that safety is the first thing that you guys uh, keep in mind. Couple quick other things while you're at our facility. We have an absolutely no off-site paint policy. 
So paint purchased on site is the only paint that you are allowed to use. If you have paint left over at the end of the day, feel free to bring it to our shop. We will store the paint here for you and you can use it on your next visit. However, you cannot take the paint home with you and then bring it back. Paint is temperature controlled. We have a temperature controlled room here at our facility and we want to make sure that the paint stays at optimal temperature to make sure that there's no permanent damage that is caused um, that paint bottles can do if they're stored improperly. We have the highest quality of paint that is around. We have a custom paint, so we want to make sure that only our paint bottles are being used. Absolutely no off-site paint. Also, when you're bringing in things like um, markers, your own equipment, we must make sure that you guys chronograph here at the beginning of every day. Our chronograph station is located conveniently around the corner from our indoor staging area, and chronograph is kept around 280 feet per second, along with our rental equipment. So we must make sure if you have your own equipment, you're bringing it on site, please see a ref and we'll make sure that we get you chronographed prior to you starting your day here at Mark Paintball. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Give us a call, send us an email, or ask a referee here while you are on site during the course of the day. We hope you enjoy your day while you're out here visiting us.